like to say for 48 years, uh, I chased uh, God. And uh, on January 7th, uh, 2016, uh, God decided to chase me. It was on that day uh, that uh, I gave up. So it, it was a day that kind of started like any other day. Um, I was in uh, my Brookfield office. I owned a company that had three offices. I live in Appleton, by the way, which is nice. If you ever get a chance, I recommend it. Um, and so I traveled down to our Brookfield office. And um, things were not going great in my life. Um, our business was struggling. Uh, we were facing new competitors. We had supply chain issues. We had personnel issues. We just had issues, okay? We were a small business, and things were happening and needed to be addressed, and we were just struggling. Um, my son was doing drugs well, by the way, he was a good drug user. He used to be able to smoke pot on the bus on the way to school and not get caught. I mean, he was talented, this kid. I mean, we tried to catch him every which way but loose and, you know, had a hard time doing it. And we, we did all the things that loving parents do. We got him help and got him therapy and tried testing him and all the rest of the stuff, but we couldn't stop him. And it was, it was breaking us up inside. And it was causing friction between my wife and I for the first time ever. We've been married 28 years, by the way, as of a couple weeks ago. A little applause, please. That always garners applause when a guy says it, by the way, and I don't think it should, because we're a pain in the rear, and it's really the women that should get the applause, because they're the ones that do all the heavy lifting. <laughs> I don't know how she puts up with me. I swear to God, I don't. But at any rate, I'm, um, I'm sitting in my office, and it's about 9.30 in the morning, um, and I'm just falling apart. And I look at my computer and it doesn't make sense to me. I can't read it. I can't understand the words that are on the computer. It's like it's fuzzy. It's like it's static. And I don't know if I'm having a heart attack. I don't know what's going on. All I know is that the stress and the anxiety and the pain and the world was just killing me. And I had one of my mentors there who was a Christian. He was working in my conference room on some marketing materials for us that I had hired him to do. So I went out to him and I grabbed him quick and brought him into my office and closed the door and sat down at my desk and he sat down in front of my desk and I said, um, I'm, I'm just at my wit's end right now, and I'm just going to go home, and I just want you to know that. And he asked me what was wrong. I told him. And he started laughing. And at that moment, I almost punched him. And the first words out of his mouth were, it's about time. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, you're not going to get anywhere until you surrender. I said, surrender to what? And he started telling me what I needed to do. And we sat there for about an hour and a half, and he took me through what it meant 
to surrender to Jesus Christ. Not the stuff that I had been doing my whole life, which, by the way, was perfectly fine. My wife and I went to church dutifully. We put our kids through Sunday school. Heck, I was even on the board of directors of my church for five years. And I did the same thing every week at that Lutheran church. I tried really hard to be a good Christian. But I wasn't. It was in one year and out the other. I wasn't a bad guy. Didn't cheat on my wife, didn't cheat on my taxes, didn't beat my kids, didn't go to bars that much. Did the right stuff, but he wasn't in here. And so Gerald laid out what I needed to do. And I was so desperate that I kind of bought into it, pretty much. I trusted Gerald, for one. I was desperate for two. And for three, having a relationship with Jesus Christ was something that I wanted my whole life. I had tried. I tried reading the Bible, it just didn't make sense. So I called my secretary and I asked her to make a reservation at the hotel I always stay at down the road, on Blue Mound Road. And I got my stuff together, it was about 11 o'clock, put it in my bag, got my car, drove the mile and a half down the road, parked in the parking lot, was just ready to hit the button to turn my car off and go inside. And I had second thoughts and I thought, this is dumb. What am I doing? I need to go back to work. I just need to work harder. And as I was getting ready to push the button, I swear to God, this whole story is true, by the way. As I was getting ready to push the button, my phone rang on my car, and it was my top uh, sales guy, Matt. And he goes, hey, where'd you go? And I go, well, I gotta do some stuff. And he goes, oh, I just wanted to let you know I got that order, and I don't remember the customer anymore, but I got that order, and they're gonna pay $20,000 today on a credit card. Talk to you later, bye, click. 20 grand is what we needed for payroll. Just like that. And so I pulled my finger back and I thought, is that one of those like signs from God thing that you like read about? that he took this thing that had been just banging on my head and hurting me and making me worried and, and he just, as I was gonna not do this, took it away right then. So I grabbed my bags and I went inside and I got into my room and I put my stuff down and um, I went to the drawer underneath the phone And everybody say it together. What did I find there? What? The what Bible? The Gideon's Bible. Thank God for the Gideon's, right? And I pulled it out. And I placed it in the middle of the end of the bed. And I got on my knees. And I surrendered. I said, I give up. And I gave in. I gave it all to him. Everything. And I swear to God as my witness in this church, in front of all of you, both here and virtually, 
at that moment, I felt in my heart, in my soul, in my spirit, the Holy Spirit enter me. It was a moment. It was a, a physical manifestation of God in my life. It was essentially, God knows, what I needed because I don't learn things the easy way. I learn things the hard way. Always have. You can ask my dad. But I felt the presence of something that was unique and different and good all at once. And it washed over me. And I felt better. And I didn't know what it meant at the time because I hadn't studied what the Holy Spirit was yet. But I knew I felt something. I knew something had changed. I knew something was different. I knew something was better. I knew something was good. Something was holy. Something was calling me. So I opened up the Bible. And I started reading John. And I read John. And for the first time in my life, I could actually read the Bible. Now, I didn't know at that time that one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit was the ability to understand the Word of God. I would learn that much later. I just did it. I felt it, and I did it. And then I went to my computer, because I'm a visual learner, and I typed in something like... um, New believer, Jesus Christ, what do I do now? Something like that. And I got uh, directed to the Promise Keepers website. Does anybody remember the Promise Keepers? I went to an event in Minneapolis some years ago. It was very moving. But I trusted that, that logo, that site. And I clicked on a video and it was by Francis Chan, who I think is brilliant, by the way. And it was titled something like, um, I believe in Jesus Christ, what do I do now? And I watched it, and I watched it, and I watched it, and I watched it. It changed my life. And from that moment on, I have been a different human. Not perfect, not even close, but different. People have noticed, friends, family, coworkers, all of you are new because of it. On my organizational chart for my business, above me as CEO, there are initials that say JC in parentheses, because he owns it. I'm just a steward. The craziest thing, and I'll get off after this, and I swear to God this is a true story, was I woke up the next morning, which was a Friday, and I said to myself, myself, I have to go to church on Sunday, because I hadn't been to church in a while, and I didn't know what time it was. So I very absentmindedly uh, just went to my laptop to find out what time church was, and I did. And when I looked at it again, I realized that somehow I had gotten the time to a different church. Not my church. 
which was the Lutheran, Lutheran Church on Mead Street, which, quite frankly, didn't um, satisfy me. But to Alliance Church, Appleton Alliance Church, which is much more biblically based and engaging and exciting. Somehow, without knowing it or thinking about it, I had gotten to the Appleton Alliance schedule. I don't, to this day, I don't know how. But I took it as a sign that I was supposed to be there instead of my Lutheran church. So that Sunday, I got up and I went to Appleton Alliance. Never been in the building before in my life. For those of you who don't know, if you go up Appleton towards Green Bay, it's the big church on the left. It's a big church. And I walked in there and got a cup of coffee and started walking around. Ran into a guy, Josh. And started talking to him and he said, you know, how you doing? I said, it's my first time here. I don't know anything. And he said, well, we got a men's group Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. And I said, I'll be there. Today I'm a table leader. I've gone through biblical training. I'm going through leadership training through that church. I've met dozens of men of God through that church. I've gone to retreats. The church has changed my life. And I still don't know why I went there. So, there are some that say that God doesn't touch our lives anymore. And I don't believe them. Because he has touched me. Absolutely. Unequivocally. So, I uh, thank you for your patience and listening to my testimony, as it were. But that's my story and I'm sticking to it.